One of my favorite tools in the Lean Toolbox is Value Stream Mapping. And by the end of this video, you're gonna have a great introduction on how to value stream map. And if you wanna be a project ninja, stick around to the end of this video and I will be sharing with you my checklist on why projects fail. Hi, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Adriana Girdler. I'm a productivity specialist and a project management professional. For videos on how to help you excel in your career and projects, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button, and a new video will be coming to you every Wednesday. Over the years, I have created tons of value stream maps for my clients who are looking to improve their processes, to understand where issues were, or even to see about future states and how they can make that work in their organization. So in this video, we're gonna look at the what, the how to, and most importantly as well, when to use it. So stay tuned, let's get to it. What is value stream mapping? Well, value stream mapping is like a snapshot. Someone taking a picture on top of your organization and really looking from true start when a customer puts an order in to true finish and the processes in between to when you send out that product or service to your customer. So it's a really cool tool, heavily used in manufacturing, but can also be used in a non-manufacturing setting as well. Value stream mapping ground rules. Okay, awesome tool, but there's a few ground rules you really have to take note of. First and foremost, you have to walk the value stream. So if you're gonna collect any data, you have to start at the beginning. So when a customer actually calls in their order or requests a service, where does that start in your organization? So you actually have that starting point and you walk the stream. When you walk the stream, you always wanna be talking to the subject matter experts. So if a customer makes a, a phone call for an order or a request for a service, where's the first place does that happen? Probably someone in planning or customer service. So you're gonna go there, you're gonna get data. You're going to ensure that you have all the information you need and you need to collect it in sequential order like you're actually following the flow of what that product or service is going through and the nice thing here is it doesn't have to be perfect it's a high level snapshot remember so you just want to have an idea of how things actually work and those are the ground rules before you get started how to draw a value stream map let's hop on my computer and I'll show you how to do it all right, so you're now ready to map, do a value stream map of a process or a particular product or a service because you want to have an understanding as to what's really going on from a high level perspective. But before you can even start, you need to understand the icons. So these icons are very specific. You have your customer supplier icon, shipment truck because you need to get things to and from, Process steps become really important, and we'll talk about that soon. You have your production control, inventory. Now you have these arrows, so when you're pushing something, uh, you have this push arrow. You have a shipment arrow, you have electronic information, so whenever something is being sent electronically. If something is being done manually, you have just a straight arrow, and last but not least, when you're done everything, you're gonna analyze for opportunities of improvement, and we call this a Kanban burst. All right, so how do you start a value stream map? You can already see I have something here in the corner. Well, you always start with the customer. And the customer is, uh, which can, by the way, be an internal customer or an external customer. And it's always on the top right-hand corner. So with a value stream map, you're actually going to work your way from the right to the left all the way down and then you're going to go from left to right and then back up to the customer. So it's, it's cyclical when you take a peek at it. So who is the customer in this particular process step? Well, it's one of my clients, Microsoft, and they put in an order for 200 units of a Spark Shift book series that I have. And there's six pocket books in that. And how do they do that? So how do I know that Microsoft wants this order? And this is why you do this value stream map, because it really shows you from true start to true finish how these particular and what we're measuring now is the book series, how it gets out the door and what we do with it. So they actually went online to our store and they put an order through and our store then sent us an email, which then goes to Cornerstone Dynamics Production Control. We then take a look and we realize we only have 25 units in stock. So we're gonna have to do something with it. We're gonna have to do a print in order to meet this demand. But we also have a conversation and realize that we would like to do some revisions and that they're needed. Um, we've had the Spark Shift series book 
um, around for a while. It supports a lot of the work we do, and we just want to ensure and take a review of it, because here's an opportunity, since we're doing a printing run, to just have updated information. Always important from a continuous improvement perspective to always ensure that you're up to date with the latest and greatest stuff. So once we make that decision that a revision is needed, we then call our graphic designer. We ring her up and we're telling her that this is what we're going to be doing. We also call the print house because we know at some point, very soon in the near future, they're going to get a brand new print ready template in order to produce our books because ultimately we want to service our client by providing and fulfilling an order. So from a value stream map perspective, this top portion is important. It's the information flow. I just don't snap my fingers and things happen. You actually have to get it from somewhere. And this information flow is really critical because there can be some potential opportunities of improvement here. So it's, it's interesting. You really need to take a look at this from true start to true finish. And information is the first place where you start. Now, now that we have the information flow, we're going to go into the process flow because now there's a physicality of actually fulfilling this order. So what happens is the graphic designer sends us the book drafts, which are in a Word document, and it is sent to our first process steps, review and update. So now what we are going to do is we're going to go across here and start capturing all the process steps. but before we do that, we need to make a decision as to what data we are going to collect as we're getting the process steps. Because the point of this is to really have a snapshot of how things truly work. So now I'm going to go into process flow data collection. So there's three areas people really look at. They look at resource-based data, time-based data, and quality-based data. The value stream map that I'm creating for you is a non-traditional one. And what I mean by that is it's not a manufacturing setting value stream map. This is a service setting. I have a product, definitely. But there's just people in an office at desks kind of doing the work, except when it goes to the printer. So a lot of times, value stream maps were really focused in the manufacturing setting. So you're going to see some things in here that's not going to uh, pertain to us which is set up time and change over time, but I'm putting it in here in case there's one of you who are watching this who want to use it in a manufacturing setting. But again, the cool thing with the data is you're going to decide what it is that you need. But the reason why we have to talk about it now is we have to figure out when or what are we going to truly measure and ensure that we do that across the board. So let's look at resource-based data. We always want to look at the batch size, which is a total items completed in the process step. We also want to look at the people. How many people does it take to actually complete this step? When we look at time-based data, again, setup time and change over time are very applicable in the manufacturing because it talks about the equipment, like the time it takes to set it up and the time it takes to change over. But what is really important in the world of efficiency, which is where you really use these particular maps, is the value added time. Time it takes for one unit from the batch to be completed. So why is this important? Because it's all about the customer and the customer only really wants to pay for their product that transforms it once. So the customer is not silly. The customer knows that it takes time to transform a product and they're okay that it's going to go from one step to another. They get it. But if I have to do three revisions, I don't want you to pass that cost on to me as a customer. So this is why we take a look as what does it take to do this one particular batch right the first time? And then total time is a total time for the batch to be completed for the process step. And last but not least is quality. For us, we're going to meet completion uh, accuracy percentage. So once the batch is complete, what's the accuracy percentage of completing the items the first time? So do we have any rework that we have to do? So we just want to have an understanding as to how good we are. So this is what we're going to take a look at. And in this particular process flow, the batch size are the six books because of those were still in working draft mode. We have two people who are doing a review and update. Our value added time truly of us getting it right the first time once is 30 minutes per book, which gives us a total time of 180 minutes. And our accuracy of doing our work is about 90%. So we just go back and forth a little bit amongst these people to ensure that, okay, we'll get it soon at 100%. So now what happens? Well, we push it, those six working draft books, to the first draft editing. 
And this is where two people take a look at it, about one hour per book, six hours in total. And from our perspective of the editing, we're at 96%. So this is where we email the graphic designer. and We say to them, okay, here's our edited versions. Can you now please get it ready for print? And we then go to that next stage where we're QCing the supplier material. And what we're noticing is back and forth, we have a lot of revisions that we're going back and forth with them. Actually, three times. So for those six books, one person is doing the QCing, which is quality control, it takes them about one hour per book, six hours in total, but we're finding the accuracy is only at 70%. So there's a lot going on here. Once we're comfortable, we then push it over to final approval. So this is where we have one person at Cornerstone Dynamics looking, approving, and giving it a 100% thumbs up, we're good to go. And that's when we send our email with the material attachments to the print house. We then go with those six books, we then ask for print proofs. So they send us some print proofs. And through those print proofs, we go back only one time. So our accuracy is really good. Our timing to take a look at those proofs, we're really happy with. And we just have to go back and forth one time. Now, the next step, is proof approval. So once we get those proofs, we have the final, final version. We take a look at it. it. Takes us about five minutes per book, 30 minutes in total, and we're completely happy with it. We say, good to go, please print. Once that's done, we're then looking at the SparkShift series receiving and shipping. So once the printing is done, the print house actually has to ship us physically those books. We then get sent here, and then we now have to fulfill an order. So we pull from our order with the print house, the order that Microsoft ordered with us originally. So we have 25 units in stock. So we're now pulling 175 units, which in total will give us the 200 units in order to fulfill the order. And then we ship that to Microsoft. So what you have here is a value stream map, which is information flow up here and the process flow. So it just really gives us a good snapshot of how we get these books out the door from the time they've been ordered to our client actually receiving them. But you're not done yet because the last thing you need to take a look at is what we call a time ladder. So how long does it take to actually go through this process step? So the top portion here, this step here, is called value added time. So we're saying 180 minutes in this process step is value added. And that in between this process step, it takes one day before we get the first draft editing. Within the first draft editing, it's 360 minutes and eight days in between before we get the QC supplier material. So as you go along here, what's really important is when you think about the book itself and what it went through from a process step perspective, it only took 19.5 hours. Actually, that's not bad for what we're going through. However, our wait time in between each process step was 33 days. So now this gives us a really good idea as to what's going on with this process step. When to use a value stream map. Okay, now you know how to actually create a value stream map. But when do you actually use one? Well, there's a couple of times that it really makes a lot of sense to use a value stream map. First and foremost is you're having issues with a particular product or service. You have some bottlenecks, some complaints, and you really want to have an idea as to where do you look? Where are the issues really stemming from root cause analysis? So that's one way to actually use a value stream map because it's a snapshot. It kind of tells you where things are that are maybe potential issues. A second place is you may be into continuous improvement. And so if you actually look at that value stream, you're going to see things that are going to really help you to pick some continuous improvement projects. Now, I've also used this quite heavily with brainstorming and idea generation. I have had clients who have these visions, like amazing ideas, but then you have to translate those ideas into actual something that's gonna be workable. So we actually create a future state value stream map. How do you want this to work? So we actually create something that goes through the whole stream, and then they can use it as a benchmark to actually create project plans from, create strategy plans from, and it's a real helpful tool. And the cool thing is, yes, it's used heavily in manufacturing, but you can totally use it in the non-manufacturing sector. So let's go back to the example that we created earlier on, and now let's talk about 
how I would interpret the value stream map that we created. So here's an example of when to use the process map and why you even kind of go through all of this. So if you need to understand where issues and bottlenecks are in the system and you want to make improvements to this because let's say Microsoft called and said, listen, you're taking way too long to produce books for us and we really need to have that happen, which by the way would be so upsetting if that ever occurred <laughs> because we're an efficiency company. <laughs> Again, this is strictly an example. Believe you me, this would never happen. But, okay, we go into clients all the time and we help them out. So, um, these CAM members, you saw that earlier on um, as to what they are. So, this is now when I would analyze this and go, okay, let me take a look. I'm going to investigate this area here. And this is why it's so important to actually uh, have this top information. Because to me, why in the heck was it that we only had 25 units in stock? And not only that, why is it that we made a decision to do a revision? Um, and ironically enough, this happens a lot in organizations where the process is fine, but someone above, who's an executive, makes these decisions and it has a total impact on the process and delivery. Um, you will not believe how often that happens. So what's nice about this is because we've collected it, we now understand that, wait a minute, there's definitely some things that we want to do a deeper dive and investigation. Do we have any concerns with how we're collecting our inventory? How come we don't have a different um, level or different unit that we're going to ensure we always have stock in hand? Why is it that we decide to do a, review, a revision at this point in time? So these are all these important stuff that really, really helps, and we're going to investigate it. So I may have a project around here to understand okay, I want to do something. Now, I'm also going to take a peek at what was going on here with our supplier and the fact that we only had a 70% uh, accuracy rate with stuff going back and forth. And the fact that we had to go back and forth so often. So that to me is another area that I may have to work with my graphic designer, understand how they're working. Perhaps we even have to change up how we work and maybe put some sort of checklist in place to ensure that they're confirming and checking off that they're doing their, their work uh, in the way that's going to help us to be more efficient, effective and efficient. So this to me, um, because we're going back and forth so often and the 70% rate really highlights, okay, there's definitely an area of improvement here that we have to take a look at because this was a huge bottleneck for us. And the amount of time, if you take a look, 8 days and 14 days, that really we have to figure out. So I don't have that information yet, but I may put a project around that to say, I need to fix this to improve this full process. And then the other area that I would look at and investigate is the overall wait time is, and even the hours at time it took to complete the book. How can I make this better? Because I really do like the idea of constantly revising the material so it's the latest and greatest information. But you can see how much energy and effort that took. Then even the wait time, like I can't be waiting or having my clients wait in order to get their books because I want to have the latest material there. And I don't necessarily want to send them stuff that's really outdated either. So I would then take a look at this as an opportunity to really make a difference. So this is how you would use this value stream map from a perspective of understanding issues, bottlenecks, and deciding what continuous improvement projects you're going to do based on those issues and bottlenecks. Now, if you really want to master your projects, definitely go to the link below and grab my checklist on why projects fail. Something that's going to be really helpful and beneficial for you. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with all the professionals you know. Now, if you're inspired by value stream mapping or you're going to attempt it, I'd love to hear from you. I read my comments. Please talk to me in the comments below.